going to deliver just a very brief remarks because I think you need to hear them. Uh, I said the same to the other group and to any one group that I have met in this week. Um, I don't think politicians of any and all parties, all of them, federal and provincially, and I also don't think that health system leaders or so-called health system leaders know what's going to happen post pandemic, not only in this province, not only in this country, but worldwide. And I mean it because I'm yeah. in touch with 20 countries. Yeah. We are going to have a revolution of the people. And I mean it. Look mm -hmm. what's happening in the Middle East. That's what will happen everywhere. Uh, in the sense of what the pandemic has done in the divide between the haves and haves not, in whichever way you slice it and dice it. So, Premier, as you look yes. at your... Um, at your own uh, policies going forward, you absolutely need to understand what's coming up. Yep. Any party or any government, including NDP, because when I look at the NDP and BC, they need help too, yep. needs to understand that people are fed up, that if the first and second wave was about ageism, the third, whether it's this country or others, is racism, and people will not put up with it anymore. That's about people in general. In nursing, um, nursing will not put up. And it's not a renewal. It's not a renewal. Tell, tell, tell um, Natalia and others to look at the tweets a bit more. There is a revolution of young nurses, and I welcome it, because these are nurses that are absolutely expert clinicians arranged that are outstanding clinicians in ICUs mm -hmm. that are also speaking about the care they provide and what they expect from governments in terms of support to them. I leave you with that because you need to reflect on that. Mm -hmm. I will start to write about it because I am, uh, I think that is a come of maturity of the nursing profession that I have not seen in my entire career. Mm -hmm. And I think this pandemic has rattled communities and the profession in a ways that I have never seen before and that are welcome for society. With mm -hmm. that, I want to tell you, Premier, to, to, to give for your remarks and also to once again thank Rana. I hope that you will tell her. Yes. Rana, has, Rana has been a source of inspiration for me in your office and you need to tell her. No, um, I said to you, thank you for putting up with me. Rana puts up with me even more. Um, and also to Christine and her staff, Laurel. But Laurel has always been in touch for many, many years. Rana is more new to the to this scenario. And she, uh, keep an eye on her. She's the best you can you have. She really I, is. I agree. I agree. She is. So we will, we will let you give, put remarks. And we do thank you for promoting uh, Natalia to parliamentary assistant, um, keep promoting her. And then we want you to hear about the opportunities that home care provides for seniors. That's the other, the other revolution. You guys are building more and more and more and more and more and more beds and mega beds and mega buildings and mega everything, but people will not want to go to those beds. People actually right. want home care. And I think Stuart and Shirley and uh, VON, um, uh, Janet will absolutely help you understand what home care can do, which you can account for it in your platform too. Yeah, well, well, thank, thank you so much, Doris. And I want to thank everyone else on the, on the line today. And I, I agree hundred percent. People don't want to be in the hospital. Some obviously have to be. Uh, but uh, I, I can speak for my, my mother, you know, when she wasn't well, she didn't want to go to that hospital no matter what. And there was great nurses and, and PSWs and other people coming in. So I, I think uh, that, that's a way of the, the future as well. And I'll always rely on the professionals to, to give me advice. And I think every time I get on, I'm, I'm very upfront. I'm, I'm not the expert. I rely on experts like yourself, Doris, and your, and your team to, to uh, you know, direct us in the in the right direction, and uh, you're so passionate about it too. So, 
um, we're we're all all ears. So I'll I'll say a, a few comments here, uh, Doris, and and I, again I, I appreciate you uh, ha having me on here. It's all, always a always a pleasure. And when Doris uh, tells me something, I always always listen. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, always great to speak to the RNAO, especially uh, during nursing week, and that that is uh, so so important. How much we appreciate our nurses. When we talked last, uh, last February, I said I was looking forward to when we could get together in person. And that day is so much closer than it was before. And I remember Doris, you showing up with those, uh, the fancy mask that you had on. And uh, the big reason, <laughs> the big reason for that is uh, the work of our, our nurses. Uh, and that's the reason we're getting through this. I wanna sincerely thank you for your incredible work and uh, personal sacrifice over the past year. Your commitment and tireless efforts, especially during this pandemic, has ensured that our most vulnerable Ontarians receive the care and support they need. Even in the unprecedented times, you've given clients and families security and stability by delivering medicine and care. You've given them a human connection when it is needed most. But we know COVID-19 has put incredible pressure on all of our nurses and made clear we require more of them to keep up with the current and future needs. Today, we announced the Ontario government is investing $35 million to increase enrollment in nursing programs in publicly assisted colleges and universities across the province. The spaces will be available from fall 2021 to winter 2022 cohorts. And we'll introduce approximately 1,130 more practical nurses and 870 uh, more registered nurses into the healthcare system. As I said uh, last time, you can always count on Doris and the RNO, RNAO team to advocate for Ontario nurses. And Doris, I remember you asked me for 10% increase in nursing seats. And I, I said at the beginning, I always listen to Doris and I'm, I'm not even joking about that. When Doris speaks, uh, everyone listens, especially in our government, I do. And in fact, we're enrolling an additional 23% in nursing programs. Uh, that's 19% uh, more RN seats and 29% more RPN uh, seats. We spared no expenses in ensuring we maxed out the capacity in the colleges and university systems to train more nurses. And these nurses will be employed in home care, hospital, and LTC, because the reality is the more nurses we create, the better it is. I want to thank you again. I want to thank each and every one of you, and God bless you and your, your family. Thank you, Premier. I think my president, Morgan Offert, would like to see a couple of words. She, by yes. the way, talk about the leader. She moved. I, want, I always take the opportunity. I'm sorry, Morgan, but I pride on that. In the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of the second wave or late in the first wave, she moved from a very secure work to becoming a clinical um, a director of care in a long-term care facility. Now that's leader. Well, thank you. Go for thank it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you, Doris, and thank you, everyone, for taking the opportunity to join us. Thank you, Premier Ford. Uh, thank you to Christine Elliott, who's joined us, and Natalia, who have joined us twice today. Thank you so much for your time, for your commitment to Ontarians. Uh, we look forward to continued partnership with you. I'm very pleased to see the increase of enrollment for um, RNs and for RPNs. I think that will help a huge deal with our healthcare sector and with being able to provide care. Uh, we all know it's not beds that provide care, it's people and often nurses that provide care. Uh, so thank you for that increase in enrollment um, and thank you for continuing to meet with us. Thank you for listening to us. Um, and I think there's some more areas where I think you could listen. Uh, but thank you very much for taking the time to meet with us. Thank you to our community care uh, providers and our home care providers and leaders who have joined us as well today. Um, it's always great to hear about the different work that nurses are doing across the healthcare system and the ways that you're making a difference in the lives of Ontarians. Um, so thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining us today um, on our last, not the last day of nursing week is Sunday, but the last business day of nursing week. Uh, so thank you so much for being uh, with us today. Thank you, Morgan. And maybe Stuart and Shirley, I don't know who is going first. 
Joanne. Oh, good. Thank you, Doris. I'm Joanne Pori. I'm the President and CEO of VON Canada. So Premier Ford and Minister Elliott, thank you very much for managing such a difficult pandemic. I know you've been working around the clock. We all recognize that. So thank you for all your efforts. So we're a group of uh, four large providers, and we work closely with the associations, but with also with other partners. And we have between us decades and decades of home care experience. So our interest here is to work closely with you to help map the future, because we believe there's a tremendous opportunity for home care. And I'm just opening up. I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Sharon Goodwin, who's an RN, and she's going to tell us a little bit of a story about home care. Good afternoon, Premier Ford and, and uh, Minister Elliott and, and others. Um, pleased, um, very pleased about your announcement uh, about the new nursing seats. That's wonderful. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, home care, and it sounds like you've had some experience. Home care is really one of the best kept secrets, um, and it, it's not usually until people have a need themselves that uh, they realize that the home care system is there. And it's often when people are going home from hospital and they need care, or when an elderly uh, person in their family starts to decline that they realize the need for care. We're not a tea and, and toast service anymore. And I think sometimes that's what we're thought of, but that's not who we are anymore. We have uh, many complex clients on our caseloads. We have registered nurses that are delivering wound care, infusion therapy, palliative care at home. That's the reality of home care today. And the PSW role, we really appreciate the efforts that you've made to increase the wages and recognize the profession. That, that role is supported by registered nurse staff. And it, you really have to have that supervisory piece in order for that PSW role to work. So the system works when the nursing role works and the PSW role works. So I wanna just talk to you a little bit about a story, um, a recent client situation that we have, just to illustrate the kind of care that's delivered in home care these days. So we, two weeks ago, we had the honor of looking after um, a family who had a child discharged home. The child had been in hospital for 15 months since birth with a congenital heart problem and had surgery, several surgeries actually. And so the family was looking to take the child home. So we worked with the critical care and nurses in the pediatric unit. And the child needs to have, it has a tracheostomy, requires oxygen, ventil uh, ventilator, and constant care. So we work with the parents to learn the skills required to look after the child at home. And our nurses go in and provide overnight care to allow the parents respite to be able to sleep at night. And that's the kind of care that's going on in the community today. So just wanting to highlight the very important role that nurses play in that care in the community. And I'll hand it over to my colleague, uh, Maureen Charlebois from Bayshore. Hi, yes, I'm the uh, Chief Clinical Nursing Officer at Bayshore Healthcare, and I echo the uh, previous speaker's comments and really thank you both for uh, taking the time to meet with us. Um, what Sharon uh, shared with you is a great example of the complexity that we can care for in home care. I've been in uh, a nurse for 30 years in the Ontario healthcare system, and much of what we care for used to be what was uh, cared for in the hospital. Um, and one thing that we have seen with the pandemic is the unintended consequences of our surgical delays. And I think this is a big opportunity that we can step up and help do our our post-op care management in the home. Just like at the beginning of the pandemic or even before the pandemic, home care came together and we provided uh, leadership right from the outset. And we led with the precautionary principle. And with that, uh, safety was our top priority for our staff and for our clients and families. And I think that really has led to uh, the fact that we've had the lowest infection rates, you know, compared to our colleagues in long-term care and in the hospital. And we are continuing to work together to vaccinate uh, the thousands 
of uh, nurses and other frontline healthcare providers in home care. And Premier Ford, that really is to support your agenda in getting our, our people vaccinated because only together we will really end the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you again. Um, and I can't recall who is speaking after me. I must have been. Pass it over to Luna. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, good afternoon, Premier Ford and Minister Elliott. I too want to echo the thank you uh, from my colleagues uh, who've already conveyed thanks on your investments. I just really, really briefly want to really bring uh, to your attention our potential and just recognize the need to invest in home care. We are well structured. We're a great asset to the healthcare system, however, not well funded. And there is a real opportunity here to expand the role home care plays in the sector. As you can see from Sharon's story, we are very capable of doing so. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Now I'm going to turn it over to Shirley to wrap things up. Thanks very much. And again, good afternoon, Premier Ford and uh, Minister Elliott. Um, I, um, I am a very proud nurse. And I also listened to Doris uh, over the years. Uh, trust me, if you don't, you, there's peril to pay. Um, but And her direction is always helpful and always about people and what society needs. I'm also a very proud CEO who has worked over 28 years now in the home and community care sector. And you'll see from this call, all of us love this space, are passionate about it. It's important to all of us. Why? Because I would say throughout the world, Canada, and certainly every Ontarian, as we know, they want to remain in their home. Absolutely. When they are sick and in the hospital, they want to get out of there as fast as possible. When they are sick in their home, they want to get the care that they can get in the home, whether that's from primary health care, home care, community support services. And when they are dying, even more importantly, the family and the individual wants to die at home. So we're here in just the most succinct way to say we're here to help you answer the call to help people remain in their home and to be healthy. We need to be recognized and we so appreciate that your last session is in the most important area and that is mm -hmm. about people in their homes. We need investment, it is true. Over the years, for many years, we have not had the same kind of investment that is needed to keep people healthy. And lastly, and most importantly, and we have seen this from certainly Minister Elliott and yourself, we need your support and we need your support in this space. We're eager, passionate, and ready to go. Yeah, that's great. Well, I love, I love that positive attitude, uh, Shirley, and, and along with Lena and Maureen and Sharon and Joanne and Morgan, you're, 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 you're passionate about your job. It's not a job. It's your passion and, and helping people. And I'm so grateful for everything that you do day in and day out. I just want to recognize my, my two all-stars. Um, in, in my opinion, uh, you know, I've followed politics for a long time and, and I couldn't be uh, happier to have uh, the Deputy uh, Premier and, and Minister of Health, Christine Elliott, by my side throughout this pandemic. She's been a solid rock, as I, as I say all the time. I, I always joke around when we go into the press conference and or come out, I always say, thank goodness I have you beside me, uh, Christine. And we're very blessed uh, and fortunate to, to have Natalia. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure, especially now on local MPPs, but uh, she does double duty. Uh, not only does she probably work more than a 12 hour day, returning calls and, and everything else she needs to do down at Queens Park, but she, also goes and works at the hospital and in some of the, the, the toughest times uh, that we, we faced over this pandemic. Uh, your, your comments about uh, home care and community care, you're, you're preaching to the converted here. Um, you're 100% you're right, Shirley, you just said it. When people wanna, you know, time is the, when they pass away, they, they don't wanna be in the hospital. They wanna be at home with their family around them. And uh, I'm, I'm all for this and, and, and also, it, not to mention it, it takes a big load off the, the system too, off, you know, off the hospitals and that. 
Um, so I'm I'm 100 behind you, and uh, I'll I'll pass it over to Christine. I apologize. I just see the screen. I only see like six people in front of me. Is Christine uh, on with us or Christine is on? Yes. And I also yeah. would ask that uh, at some point, Stuart. I started by saying Stuart, and I will go back to Stuart, who is not a nurse, but is one of the business people. Um, and Stuart and I not always saw eye to eye either. Well, my gosh, <laughs> he accused me of everything and anything in the world. I even almost lost my purse because of him. I left it in oh. a restaurant for real. It's all for real. It's true what I'm saying. How can you in not the, help love the doors? You know, how can you not? You know, you're, you're in amazing. any case, he, he made me lose my head and I almost lost my purse. <laughs> that, upset, that upset he was with me. But Stuart is one of the people in business, and I mean in business, that understands best, in my view, the importance of nursing for the non-nurse in home care. And, and I want him to speak about that because Premier, sometimes when we hear you speak about uh, home care, um, as much as PSWs are critically important without nursing and without RNs, you cannot deliver good home care. So before we are done, I need Stuart to give a spiel because when, when he gave it to me, I said, where were you before? Premier um, and, nice, and, and Minister, I know you know the importance of nurses, but we, we've got to really focus in on how nursing is going to help in terms of this, it's the cornerstone to get people in a stable position in their home. We take acute people home. We don't take chronic people home. We take acute episodes home and we stabilize them. So our nursing is so important to get started and to keep things. And if you think about the importance of home care with respect to those, and I keep hearing different numbers, but no less than 250,000 people waiting for surgery, we're gonna have to learn how to process them that much faster to the point where can we be doing day overnight surgery and getting great home care and getting home care as part of the front end of the care, not just something that happens on Friday afternoon, uh, because that's the difference that, that we can make and our nurses can make, and we've got to get a better system to do that. And then we can stabilize them with PSWs. Well, th thank you, Stuart. Ironically enough, we had this conversation with uh, Christine and the, and the team today about the backlog surgeries and you know, I, I always say I'm not an expert in healthcare, but I'm pretty good with numbers. And I see the backlog in surgeries, but I, I do have all the confidence in the world and Christine and and with with your support, with ideas from uh, folks like yourself, we, we can get caught up and we and we will. And I always believe, Stuart, as you said, there's there's probably always better ways in every system to deliver services, and and uh, we're we're all yours. But I, I would love to pass it over to Christine and and uh, have a few comments from Christine. Well, thank, you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Premier, and good afternoon, everyone. I, uh, I am a big fan of home care as well. You've heard us talk a lot about building more long-term care homes. We need some of them, but I think you're, what Shirley said is absolutely right. People want to be at home. And so, and, and we know that nurses are essential for them being able to do that, to provide the level of care that they need. And in terms of dealing with the surgical backlog, yes, we have a, it's, it's huge, you know that as well. And so I look forward to working with you and hearing more of your ideas about um, uh, the additional supports that we need in order to be able to get people home because we, we know that they will recover faster too, that they, with their home and with their family around them, that this makes a huge difference and, and nurses are the, the heart of that. So um, thank you. And I look forward to continuing to work with all of you. Yeah, and I, I always I always say, uh, and this this goes, Doris. I'm I'm sure you can appreciate this. Uh, we 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 haven't been penny pinching, but I think there's a lot more we can do financially uh, to support you. I know Christine's behind behind you on that as well. And and we'll, as they say, you put your money where your mouth is, right? Um, and that that's what we'll we'll do, and we'll we'll make sure we're there to support each and every one of you. Uh, there's there's one thing about this pandemic, and I think you know the figures show for themselves of 51 billion we spend. Yes, do, do I watch? Do I have a business mind? Do I watch pennies and nickels and everything? But when this pandemic 
it wasn't about the money because I, I, I had confidence when we get through this, we'll turn the economy on and we'll, we'll make that money back. But right now, um, and I've, I've stuck to this, I won't spare a penny uh, to, to make sure our healthcare system is working properly. And uh, I, I, I know we've, we've shown people that and we'll continue doing that and uh, making sure that we deliver pr proper health care. And uh, I guess my, my, my one thing, I spent a lot of time in the U.S. And I know we've, you know, we always get uh, that this kind of caught us everyone, the whole world off guard. But our goal is to build up the ICU capacity when I, you know, everyone talks about Florida and this and that. Uh, they have 30% more ICU capacity. And that's another goal that we want to achieve as, as well until we aren't facing uh, the situation that we're, we were facing, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, we're still in a tight position. But uh, again, I have all the confidence in Christine and uh, the team. And when I say the team, I include all of you folks, uh, the CEOs of the hospitals, the docs, pretty well everyone. And there's not a day that goes by, I'm not talking to 10, 15 people in the healthcare system. But uh, again, th thank you everyone for everything you're doing. Don't build, don't build more nursing homes beds and don't build more ICU beds. Put on social determinants and you will need less ICU beds and less long-term care beds. Put in home care, you will need less long-term care beds. You know, put on prevention premium. This is where the world will be moving. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing, Doris. That's why I'll take your advice. I think if we could do a little bit of both, you know, we just need a little yes. more ICU yes. because we got yes. caught pretty in a tough position. And and but I, I'm all for the home care. Um, again, I, I it, it, it's it, until you walk a mile in someone's shoes, as they say. And Christine knew my mother very well. Um, there, there's you know, as she would say, there's no damn way you're sticking me in that hospital. <laughs> that's what she used to say to us. And I want to be at home. So uh, that's that's where we keep kept her, my mom. But, but and thanks. with that, Premier, uh, we thank you very, very much. We want to remind you and Christine that you owe us on the opioids crisis. I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, leave this meeting without saying that. We yes. are not going away. That needs to be responded before the elections. Uh, even the, the, the sites are not open, but also on the issue of safe drugs, etc. We will be back talking with you. And if I may steal one minute to introduce yes. you to one of my mentees, Sue Faber, who I know has met with Christine Elliott, and give her just, because I know she will be so thrilled also, to speak with you about Lyme's disease, which is mm. her agenda, and she is the best that there is on that. Sue, take it on for just one or two minutes. Okay, well, thank you. Um, this is an extraordinary opportunity. So I'm Sue Faber. Um, I'm co-founder and president of Lyme Hope. I'm a registered nurse and I'm also a hub fellow um, with Doris and she's been an incredibly um, inspirational leader um, to help me. Um, but the issue of Lyme disease is something that is very, very serious um, all across Canada, especially in Ontario. Um, we have met with Minister Elliott um, several times and I'm hoping that we can maybe arrange future meetings to move this issue forward. Um, the issue that I'm I'm seriously concerned about is mother to baby transmission of Lyme disease. It's an area that has received very little focus and yet has been uh, recently addressed by the CDC in the US. And we really need to support families who have children who have been impacted by this alternate mode of transmission. That among many other things, um, many Ontarians still have to pay out of pocket to receive care for Lyme disease in the US and abroad um, because their care is denied um, here in Ontario, which is which is just not right. So thank you, I, I'll, I'll stop there, but thank I'm you. committed to, you, to making a difference um, for our fellow Ontarians. Thank you, and I do want to end on a positive note, Premier. Um, two things to take credit on for you. Uh, one is the reuniting families. And again, I would say Rana was my right hand on that. She brought to she brought it to you. We couldn't convince anybody in government. No other government had done it, so we couldn't even point out those did it, those did it. And it happened, and Ontario yeah. was amongst the first to reunite families in long-term care, and that meant a world of a difference for them. 
And the second is the way we work with our indigenous communities. And I think overall in Canada, comparatively speaking to any day work with indigenous communities, which is pretty much pathetic in general, but during the pandemic, we did a good job, relatively speaking, um, in terms of keeping COVID out, working closely with the leaders the way that it needs to be done. And hence the results that the uptake of vaccines is so, so uh, impressive. Uh, if we can learn from that to really do good work with our indigenous brothers and sisters uh, ongoingly, that would be fantastic. And thank you, Christine, for extending the funding for us to work with indigenous communities on the best practice spotlight organizations and on guidelines for them because uh, we had a, one of the Take Your MPP to work uh, with Mike Schreiner, was with our VPSOs in indigenous uh, indigenous VPSOs. My gosh, I was I was so overly impressed on the work that they are doing with relatively small funding, doing amazing, amazing, amazing work. So, uh, uh, thank that's great. I, we, you know. Uh, Doris, we have a phenomenal relationship with Indigenous First Nations communities. I just got off the phone uh, with them last week with uh, Greg Rickford, our, our Minister of Indigenous Affairs. They were so grateful, all the chiefs. They were just so grateful for uh, remote immunity and and uh, what, what a great job everyone's doing and uh, how orange flew into all these communities and and uh, vaccinated so many people and, and the support from healthcare uh, workers that, that flew in to help them. And they're, they're just over the top. They're, they're as happy as anything. Now we're gonna fly in and get the, the, get the uh, 12 to 18, 17 year olds and as well as uh, the second doses uh, well, under, uh, well underway. And that all has to do with uh, great work Christine uh, has done uh, along with Sylvia Jones and, and who played a big part in it was Orange. Uh, they, they, they played a massive, massive part. Uh, Homer over there, if you, yeah. Doris, have you, have you met Homer before? No, I don't know well. You yeah. gotta be, I don't know very well. Yeah, I Homer's know. great. great. You know, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll love him when you, everyone loves Homer. Uh, you know, well, that's all the Chiefs were saying. We yeah. love Homer, he can fly in, he's part of the, the uh, community now, they said. He's an honorary member, as they told me. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, yeah, he's a great guy. That's yeah. very good. That's excellent. Thank you, Premier. And thank you, Christine and Natalia. Pleasure. Um, for uh, coming and spending time with us. Doris, if Natalia's I... on, can she say a word uh, for a minute, Doris, if Natalia's on? Absolutely. Yes. And then, and then, and then, Premier, yeah. when we met in person with you and Christine and um, I think Rana was there and I don't know if Laurel was there. You offered me, you know, you offered me the Order of Ontario, which I said yeah. to you, I already had, I didn't yeah. need. But I said to you who I wanted it to have it. Well, that nomination is already in. Uh, is, and it's the lady, the lady, my immediate past president. Say hi, Angela. Because she is the one that needs to... Hi, Premier. Hi, Minister of Health and Natalia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And... We look forward to continue working with you. And we, if we expect great things, we know great things will happen. So that's my mm -hmm. motto for the day. Expect great things and great things will happen. Thank you. Angela, I just noticed Braithwaite. We grew up on in Etobicoke with Braithwaite. So are you related to Leonard Braithwaite at all? No, Braithwaite is my married name. So yeah. no. Okay. Husband, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a Scottish name. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I got a little bit of Scottish blood in me, too. <laughs> um, uh, is Natalia available? Yes, Premier. Thank you so much. I'm here. Thank you, Premier, right. Minister. Hello, everyone. It's always a pleasure to join RDO uh, and to see my mentor, Doris. Uh, who we've known each other for many years, and I always say that it was actually the first time that I've ever stepped foot in Queen's Park was as a student on a student placement with RNAO. And I remember um, Minister Elliott back then, she was the healthcare critic for our PC party. And I absolutely fell in love with the advocacy work that RNAO was doing. And uh, 
you know, with the promise of a better health care. And this is actually where my passion for politics came out of was from my passion for nursing. So I'm just so all, uh, always impressed with the great advocacy work that RNAO does on behalf of nurses, but also of course, on behalf of patients. And when I think of nurses, I truly think of resilience. Nurses have been so resilient throughout this pandemic. And when I went back into the front lines a year ago, you know, have welcomed me and taught me all the protocols. So I, I always think of resilience. And I think it's also very fitting that this year's theme for nursing week is we answer the call because nurses always answer the call whether it's day night during the holidays you know when when Ontarians take their breaks uh and and go on vacation nurses are working day in and day out whether it's Christmas whether it's Easter or Ramadan nurses are always present there for their patients day in and day out and they always answer the call and Doris she always answers my call whenever I have a question about a policy item, whether it is a PMB that I'm thinking about. And by the way, Doris, I have a PMB coming up. I have a valid date, so I'll be calling you. Um, we, Doris always answers the call. So I'm just so pleased to be here today. And today's announcement that we're increasing the, the enrollment of nurses. I think this is wonderful news. This is what nurses have been asking for. And I'm so pleased that we are growing the healthcare force. Uh, and including what we've done as a government with Minister Romano, we uh, we are now allowing colleges to have standalone nursing programs. Yes, so all of exactly, Premier and Premier, I, I just have to give one one big shout out to you. You know, at the onset of the pandemic, when we were short on PPE, Premier Ford actually showed up on my doorstep in my apartment <laughs> with a huge box of masks. Of masks. <laughs> You know, I, I got those early like, Scarborough at some medical place, and they, I, we bought these masks, and and you said you needed them at the hospital, so I got my pickup truck, and away we went over to your place, and I think I gave you 5000 I think we had 20 <laughs> we were splitting them up. We, we uh, certainly split them up with my nursing colleagues, but I will never forget that. This is the kind of leader we have in Premier Ford, and he's, you know, like a father figure to me as well, and he's always taking care of all of us. And whenever I have an issue and I text the premier, within five to 10 minutes, he either calls me or texts me back. So I, I'm just really grateful to be don't a part of this. Alone. Sorry, don't take credit. He was don't, don't. not going to come to this event. People don't know this, but I'm going to say. <laughs> he was not going to come. I send him a text and then Rana says, well, I gather that you sent a pretty persuasive text. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, Doris, yes, honestly, the way it works, like they must get three, four hundred. I, I get whatever thirty five hundred emails yes. a week in the office, and it, it doesn't get to me. And it drives I knew, me crazy. I knew it didn't get so to you. That's why I you the text. I'm not going to read the text. Yeah, no, contact me personally. I'll always make it happen. Sometimes they just don't even tell me because it, it starts flowing. My, my staff said to me, "How did you make it happen?" I said, "I'm not reading it to you, but I did send the text." Okay, uh, Natalia, I know I'm getting to be an old man. I'm not old enough to be your father. I'll be your big <laughs> friend. Your father, okay? <laughs> you raised me about 20 years there. <laughs> you cannot be my father, Premier. You're, you're I think, what? Not your father, years, Doris. Or seven. Impossible, <laughs> Premier. Uh, Doris, you're the best. I got to tell a funny story. I've never told Doris this. I think one time, it was about a year and a half ago, you called me up and you were just going 100 miles an hour. And, you know, I, I, I think I called Christine. Yeah. I said, I'm not too sure uh, what Doris just said because she was pretty excited, but we better, <laughs> we better call her. <laughs> oh, boy. But I love you, Doris. You're the best. And uh, thank you, Christine and Natalia and everyone here. Listen, uh, Premier, and, if you any times you think you are the only one that has suffered the consequences of the of the Doris factor, just call Dalton. No, I love I love it. Everyone knows just it. Commiserate it's, with him or with Kathleen. Any, anytime you call me or everyone says Doris, I said just make it happen. I, I whatever it takes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you just you're so passionate. You that, heard it, that is on tape. Make it happen. Oh, I do. Okay. Believe me, I, I say that. It's on Monday. So, we'll, we'll get it done with everyone's support. And thank you so much yes, for thank you. this. And uh, we're, we're going to have a good summer. We really are. We just I have think to get we more need this. He wants a picture. 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Before we... before we all go, we'd love to take a picture of everybody. Okay. Thank and you. you want to be in the picture too, PG, right? Yeah. No, no, I don't. Please, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I please take the photo. <laughs> yes, please, Madison, take it. No, but you have to be in it. Yes, PG. Thumbs up for nursing. Thumbs up for nursing. Thumbs up. Oh, I'll count yeah. down. When everyone has their thumbs up. <laughs> Two, one. <laughs> Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thumbs up for home care. Thumbs up yes. for home care. Yes. Okay, double thumbs. <laughs> okay, double thumbs. There you, go. there you go. All right, one more. All right, double thumbs home care. Three, two, one. Thanks. Excellent. Thank awesome. you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Happy nursing week, guys. Happy nursing week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Premier. Bye.